Welcome back to the Chem OG. Today we're going to take a look at organic chemistry reactions and how they're named. Understanding why it is that a reaction has a certain name or is classified under a certain type is very, very important in terms of developing your familiarity with organic chemistry. And so reactions in organic chemistry can be classified based on changes to a particular type of bond, and that is the sigma bond. And so just as a review, whenever we have a single bond, a single bond contains one sigma bond. If we have a double bond that contains one sigma bond and one pi bond, and if we have a triple bond, it contains one sigma bond and two pi bonds. And so sigma bonds exist every single time you have a bond of any sort. And so when we talk about reaction types, that's going to keep track of how many sigma bonds we have before and after. And so the reaction types that we're going to talk about today are going to be three key ones. We're going to talk about addition reactions. And the reason they're called addition reactions is because they increase, or in other words, they add to the number of sigma bonds. We're going to talk about elimination reactions. And the reason they're called elimination reactions is because they're going to take down or decrease or eliminate uh, our number of sigma bonds. And we're going to talk about substitution reactions. And substitution reactions are ones that swap one sigma bond for another, hence the name substitution. And so the term addition in chemistry means something very specific. It means we're adding to the number of sigma bonds. It's not just, oh, we added stuff, right? We Adding stuff happens in chemistry all the time. An addition reaction one specific, is one that specifically refers to sigma bonds and the fact that we're increasing the number of sigma bonds. Same thing with elimination, same thing with substitution. It's all about what changes we're making to the number of sigma bonds. And so let's take a look at this reaction right here. So if I take a look at this reaction, uh, what's happening is I have an alkene functional group and those same two carbons that are participating in an alkene bond are now, you know, with two bromines attached to them. And so what I want to take a look at is, and I want to remember, is that I'm going to keep track of the number of sigma bonds on this carbon. And I got to remember that there are hydrogens attached to there too. So there's one sigma bond here. There's one sigma bond here. And there's one sigma bond here. So each of those carbons has three sigma bonds in the reactant. Now, if I take a look at the product, my carbon here now has four sigma bonds because there's, remember, there's a hydrogen attached here too. And so there's a carbon here, a carbon here, there's a bromine, and there's a hydrogen attached as well. So that means I went from three sigma bonds on those carbons to now four sigma bonds on those carbons. And that represents an increase, or in other words, we added to the number of sigma bonds that are here. So this particular reaction is referred to as an addition reaction. We went from three sigma bonds on each of those carbons to four sigma bonds. So the task of counting up individual sigma bonds can be a little bit daunting. And really, it's a lot easier to do the following. Instead of keeping track of sigma bonds, what we can do is we can keep track of pi bonds instead. So it's a little bit of a pro tip. It's a little bit easier to look at pi bonds because if I'm just only looking at pi bonds and that's pretty much it, I can just spot the following. I have one pi bond in this molecule and I have zero in this one. So in an addition reaction, because your number of sigma bonds is going up, it means that pi bonds are disappearing. So the best way or the quickest and most efficient way of being able to spot an addition reaction is to just note that you used to have pi bonds and now you don't. So whenever pi bonds disappear, that's an example of an addition reaction. All right, let's take a look at another reaction. So here in this particular reaction, if we're doing the same thing and we're keeping track of pi bonds and ignoring sigma bonds, I notice that I have no pi bonds on the original uh, cyclohexanol here, and now I have a pi bond that popped up. And so that's known as an elimination reaction. And most students can spot elimination reactions for that reason. It's like, oh, I, I know that I associate elimination with pi bonds, but the reason that they're known as elimination is because we're getting rid of sigma bonds. And as a result, we're putting pi bonds in their stead. And so on each of these uh, carbons that are eventually gonna pick up a pi bond, I used to have four sigma bonds here and I used to have four sigma bonds here, but in the product now I have three. So this is why this is known as, as an elimination reaction. And the best way and the quickest way to spot those is to note that pi bonds appear. All right, let's take a look at this type of reaction. And so the reactivity is happening at this particular carbon right here, right? We're lengthening the carbon chain. And now, um, you know, we have uh, an ethyl group attached to that carbon. 
And so if I take note of how many sigma bonds and pi bonds I had, originally I had three sigma bonds, and in the end I still have three sigma bonds. So my number of pi bonds has not changed. My number of sigma bonds has not changed. So this is an example of a substitution reaction. Okay, so this is an example of a substitution reaction. Probably the best way to do this is to note that we really didn't change the number of pi bonds we had. So substitution reactions are ones that preserve your number of sigma and your number of pi bonds. Everything stays the same. All right, let's take a look at this reaction. So if I'm looking at the uh, reactant and I'm looking at the product, there's one pi bond on the left, there's one pi bond on the right, and that's pretty much it. So this is yet another example of a substitution reaction. Now, when we're talking about carbonyls that have uh, possible leaving groups attached to them. So here this chlorine can act as a leaving group. Here this oxygen in the right conditions can act as a leaving group. Whenever you're talking about carbonyls with attached leaving groups, sometimes these are called addition elimination reactions. So depending on the textbook, depending on what kind of exam you're taking, um, some exams, like for example, the MCAT, uh, makes it very, very clear and specific that this type of reaction is only called an addition elimination reaction. So that's something to watch out for. Technically, this is a substitution reaction, but um, on certain exams, it's only referred to as an addition elimination reaction. All right, so one last example for the road. What kind of reaction is this? Pause, pause, pause. So we started out with one pi bond. Now we don't have it. So this is an example of an addition reaction. We used to have a pi bond on the on the reactant molecule, and now that pi bond disappears. And in particular, this is known as a nucleophilic addition. So the names of these reactions, uh, speaking of addition, uh, speaking of elimination, speaking of substitution, there's a whole bunch of reactions that use those particular names and that nomenclature. And now hopefully you have a little bit more familiarity with what those names mean. Thank you so much for listening to today's lesson. Please be sure to support this channel by subscribing and by hitting the like button.